So this last question on test two was a dual cycle for an internal combustion engine. But the tricky part about this question was that there's a pressure increase here from three to four, which we haven't seen before on any of our other problems. So we're given our initial parameters here with the initial pressure, the initial temperature. Then we're given the two different pressures, P3, P4, given our compression ratio here, and V4 over V3, or our cutoff ratio, is 1.8. So to solve this problem, we'll start solving at state 1, and then go through the cycle, and then eventually calculate the network done by the cycle, the total heat input, and the thermal efficiency. So at state 1, here we're given that P1 is 14.7 PSIA, T1 is 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to 546.67 ranking by adding about 460 to the Fahrenheit temperature. Next step is to solve for state 2. So to solve for state 2, we know the process is isentropic compression. So then we can use these isentropic formulas here, which you are familiar with. And we'll just plug in those numbers here, put in our 546.67R. We know our compression ratio is 10.3. K for air is 1.4, so K minus 1 is 0 0.4. And we punch this into our calculators, and we get a temperature of 1389.5 ranking. Now, I'm also going to find the volume at state 2, and to do that, I will use the ideal gas law. Um, we'll start off by knowing that V2 is equal to V1 divided by 10.3, and then saying 1 over 10.3 is equal to RT1 over P1, and we know the values for T1 and P1 already. So I've put the numbers into this expression here, and if we look at our units, PSI and PSI cross each other off, and we have ranking and ranking cross each other off, so we're left with the units cubic feet per pound mass. And when we put the numbers into our calculator, we end up calculating that it is 1.337 cubic feet per pound mass of air. So to solve for the temperature at uh, state 3 now, we use the ideal gas law formula here. We are given the pressure at state 3 is 400 PSI. The volume is the same as the volume at state 2. That's 1.337 feet cubed per pound mass. And we divide that by R, which is 0 0.3704 PSIA feet cubed per pound mass ranking. So we look at our units. The units cancel each other out here, 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 and we're just left with ranking. So our temperature at state 3 is 1443.8 R. State 4 will solve in a similar manner using the ideal gas law here. So when we solve for state 4, we get a temperature of 2,988.8 R. The key here is knowing what the volume is at state 4. And we know that V4 is equal to 1.8 multiplied by V3. Now to find state 5, we'll use the fact that expansion from 4 to 5 is an isentropic process. So we'll use the isentropic formula and enter in all the values which we already know. So we know T4. We know that this volume ratio has to be 1.8 divided 
divided by 10.3 and k for air is 1.4 minus 1 is 0 0.4 we solve for this and end up with a temperature T5 of 1487.5 Rankine. Now to finish solving this problem, we need to go through each process and calculate what the heat transfer is in each process and the work being done um, in, each, in each process. Then we can get the total heat input and the network and ultimately calculate the thermal efficiency. So you may recall for a simple piston cylinder system that the mass inside the cylinder here is constant throughout. Therefore, our energy balance for each process of, of the cycle works out to delta U, the change in internal energy, is equal to the heat input during that stage, subtract the work output. Now if work is going in during this specific process then we would instead of having a minus W out we would have plus W in. So we'll go through each process and apply this energy balance equation. So from 1 to 2 is compression in that case delta U is equal to Q in minus W out. In this case, it is isentropic and adiabatic, so therefore Q in is equal to zero, and we'll say work going in is equal to delta U, which is equal to CV T2 subtract T1. We substitute in the numbers that we know for those values, and we end up that the work going into the system during compression is equal to 144.12 BTU per pound mass of air. From 2 to 3 is a constant volume heat input. If we write out that energy balance, we have delta U is equal to Q in 2 to 3 minus W out. In this case, we know that it is a constant volume process, so therefore no work is done because the volume is constant. So then we can expand this out to delta U is equal to CV T3 minus T2 is equal to Q2 to 3. We substitute in the value for the heat capacity and the temperatures that we previously calculated. We have the heat input during this process is then equal to 9.29 BTUs per pound mass. From 3 to 4 we have an expansion process with increasing pressure. If we write out our energy balance here we have delta U is equal to Q in minus work out. All these three terms are non-zero, so we need to find the value for all three terms. First, let's start with finding the value for this W out. We know that the work from 3 to 4 is equal to the integral from V3 to V4, the pressure with respect to volume. Or, in other words, if we draw out a diagram here with the process from 3 to 4, which we know is a linear process, we can say that the area under this curve here is equal to that work from 3 to 4. So we know the value at point 3 we have 400 psi and at point 4 we have 460 
sorry, 460 PSI, we know we have V3 and V4 is equal to 1.8 V3. That makes solving this integral much easier because we're just finding the area inside a trapezoid. So W from 3 to 4 is equal to the midpoint 400 plus 460 divided by 2 multiplied by 1.8 V3 minus V3. So we have 430 PSI, 0 0.8, and V3, which was equal to 1.337 feet cubed per pound mass. So the work from 3 to 4 is 85.11 BTU per pound mass. So if we go back to this energy balance equation, we, we can rewrite it so we can find the Qn. Q from 3 to 4 is equal to delta U plus W out, which is equal to Cv T4 minus T3 plus 85.11. BTU per pound mass. We'll plug in the values we know for CV, T4, and T3, and we end up with 349.30 BTU per pound mass. Finally, from 4 to 5 is expansion, reversible adiabatic or in other words, isentropic expansion. Therefore, if we write out our energy balance, delta U is Qn minus W out. We know that Qn in this case is equal to zero. So in this case, we have delta U is Cv T5 minus T4 is equal to minus W out, or W out is equal to CV T4 minus T5, which is equal to 0 0.171, multiplied by the temperature difference here and here. And when we calculate that, we get the work out is equal to 256.72, BTU per pound mass. So the total network is now equal to 85.11 plus 256.72 subtract 144.12 and then that works out to 197.71 BTU per pound mass and the total heat input is equal to the sum of our two heat addition stages that's 349.30 BTU per pound mass plus 9.29 .9, which when you add them together sums up to 358.59 BTU per pound mass. So now we go to calculate our thermal efficiency we know that's the network divided by the total heat input, so we can substitute in those values which we had just calculated. And 358.59 BTU per pound mass. So the thermal efficiency 
works out to 0.55 or 55% for the whole cycle. And there you have it.